Hi friends, it's Sasha. Welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to do a really quick book review because I just finished this book. It is one of my ARCs that comes out. It should be out March 2nd. I will make sure that is the right publishing date. Um, all the publishing dates sort of got weird in 2020 for pretty obvious reasons, so I will double check to make sure. So I do have a NetGalley ARC of this book. Thank you so much to NetGalley, the publishers, and the author for providing me with that copy for review. I also this past fall worked at a bookstore, which is how I was able to get this physical copy of The Lost Apothecary by Sarah Penner. This story sounded so exciting when I was looking up arcs on NetGalley. It was pitched as historical fiction set in London and about a woman apothecary who perhaps made poisons to sell to women. The thing you don't learn until you start reading the book is who these poisons are designed for, and that ended up being one of my favorite parts of this book, which is very weird to say out loud that my favorite part was reading who was getting murdered. Okay. <laughs> In my memory, this is my first book that really deals with a serial killer, even though she doesn't necessarily consider herself one. Um, we learn that the apothecary is providing poisons as well as just regular topical ingestible antidotes for women and uh, female maladies. That was a really hard sentence to say. So our apothecary's name is Nellie, I believe. Let me make sure. We have three main characters in this book, which is something, oh, it's Nella, pardon me. Um, we have three main characters and three different perspectives, which I absolutely loved. Um, and Nella took over her mother's apothecary store when her mother passed away when Nella was in her early 20s. So Nella's mother was all about providing help to women, whether it was after childbirth or um, things that would help calm them down in depressions or really anything you could ask for from an apothecary at this time. This is set around, I believe it was 1780s in London. Something tragic happened in Nell's young adulthood, which then caused her to turn from providing help to women in terms of medical help and then helps them kill men who have done them wrong. This can range from men trying to rape them or men who have slept with other women. You think of anything a man has done that would upset a woman, not like trivial things, but pretty serious life-altering consequence things that men have done, and those are the women that Nell, Nella helps in providing poisons for. We also meet a very young character named Eliza. Eliza is working for a woman who procures a poison for her husband. And I'm not going to tell you why, because that's much too much of a spoiler, um, but Eliza is about 10 or 12 when she is sent on, um, on the mission of getting the poison that will kill her master. Oh right, the poison, the poison for Cusco, the poison chosen specially to kill Cusco, Cusco's poison. That poison? Yes, that poison. Gotcha covered. And she does know that it's a poison because she is taught how to, um, she's taught sort of how to cook it and prepare it so that when she serves it to him, it will all work the way that they want it to. The really cool thing about this story, and I have seen this with some other historical fiction stories, is that we are also in the present day perspective. We follow a married woman named Caroline after she discovers that her husband has kept a very big secret from her, and they were supposed to travel to London for their 10 year anniversary. Instead, Caroline goes on this trip by herself to sort of decide what she's going to do with her marriage, what she's going to do next, and to reevaluate her life. Throughout certain events, Caroline ends up finding one of the apothecary bottles that Nella and Eliza would use in the apothecary shop, and this sends Caroline on a historical spiral of epic proportions. Caroline ends up going to the British Library to do research. She also does some trespassing on certain properties to try and find the actual apothecary shop, and then 
out of nowhere, her husband shows up. I just loved these three women in this story so very much. There was only one time towards the end of the novel where I was upset that we had different perspectives because I really needed to know what was going on with each of them in a linear way and having to wait two or three chapters until we got back to that one character just kept me reading and reading and reading. This story was just wonderful. It dealt with so many great themes that I think a lot of women will appreciate. Um, a lot of women will recall their childhood and some of the myths we thought about growing up and becoming a woman. And I just, it, I knew as soon as I was about 25% in that this was a five out of five for me. I highly recommend this story if you like historical fiction, if you like women's fiction, if you like historical fiction that recenters women as protagonists who are strong and capable and stand up for themselves. And I don't recommend that you murder your husband or boyfriend if he cheats on you. I'm not saying at all, at all, at all, that that is what you should do but it was really fun to read about it. Like, I would never, obviously, I would never kill anyone on purpose, on accident, I, it's my biggest fear. But this book was fantastic. I really, really recommend that you pick it up. So thank you again to NetGalley for providing me with my e-arc of this book. It was fantastic, it was so great, and I'm so proud that I actually read a book before the publishing date, yay, me! <laughs> But I am going to stop rambling and gushing over this book now. I really hope you pick it up. Please let me know if you do. Leave me a comment down below if this sounds interesting and we can chat more about it. And I'll see you guys next time. Thanks so much for watching. Bye!